Hello everyone, Nikitansky here. Today I'm starting a new YouTube series where I will be building a game. Uh, I will be using Closure Script and also RAM and Data Script because, well, I, obviously I think that uh, they are the best uh, stack for doing web applications and also games, probably games. I'm not really sure, so I haven't tried to do that before, so I'm not really sure we will get a decent performance with Data Script, but I guess we'll see, right? I also don't promise you that we will finish that game, but I think we will get enough interesting points uh, along the way. And we will try to get uh, as long as we can, right? So, yeah, um, the game I'm, I'm talking about will be something like this. So it's, uh, it's kind of like tactical turn-based game, uh, sort of like Heroes of Mind Magic or uh, Into the Breach, right? Where you take turns, you move one unit per time, you attack or you defend or something like that. So basically, yeah, not real time, but with some animations uh, and something like that. No. I think uh, it will be a perfect fit for data script data model because there is like really lots of data and it's uh, uh, structured in, in interesting ways and you have to query it in interesting ways, right? I also want to try entity component system, which is an architecture that um, is a, a hot thing in gaming community right now. And data script, in fact, uh, from what I know about it, and data script, in fact, is a perfect fit for, for that, right? So, so uh, each episode will be short and dedicated to one single topic, right? So the first episode, this episode, will be about um, setting up the project. So how do you start a closure script project? Okay, let's start. So the first thing you do, you go to the FigWheel um, website and you get FigWheel. Right? It's called FigWheel Main and I totally recommend everyone who is using, um, who is writing a project in ClojureScript to use FigWheel, right? It will reload code for you, it will recompile the code for you, so it basically automates uh, in a really nice way all the uh, tasks that I uh, usually do, right? So uh, we go here and what we need here is basically um, something like okay install let me find install reinstall closure oh no sorry we need template not install so we are going to use template to, to create a project right so template uh, works like this it actually requires you so we'll not be using colliding in instead we will be using clj which is the default uh, like a blue install CLJ. It's a command line script that let you run closure files, right? So uh, the first thing you know, if, if you're just starting that, let me show you. So you go to .closure.deps, deps hidden, and you add, add this profile, right? So it's basically, it tells CLJ script uh, when you want to include it, uh, it tells it to um, download this dependency and use it, right? So basically this dependency from Sean Corfield is a project that basically manages the template. So basically if we, if we run uh, it with this profile, right? So CLJ minus A means include profile, uh, colon U, and then, then we do that. But yeah, we're not going to use reagent, obviously. We're going to use RAM, we want RAM here. And let's call it heroes main. So now what will happen is CLJ will try first to get the uh, Sean Corfield dependency, then that dependency when will run in closure environment and we'll try to find a figwheel main template. I don't know where, somewhere, right? It's, it's somewhere. Uh, then that template will be invoked with uh, uh, these parameters, like heroes main is the name of the project, RAM is basically what you want to include as a templating um, uh, like uh, interface library or framework. Right? So it takes its time and my, my, my computer isn't exactly the, the fastest one. Uh, but yeah, uh, so it's just finished. So if we, if we at least we see the here's main is here. Let me just uh, remove because I, I, I wanted the folder to be called here's. Okay. Let me go here and I will also open that folder in Sublime. Let's see. So let me show you what we got. Right. So uh, the first uh, is probably the, the most important part is devs.eden. It's basically the dependencies. Let me just update them to the most recent versions. We also want to add uh, data script. 
which has this version, right? And also, yeah, and there's also FigWheel profile, which includes FigWheel dependencies, the build profile, which runs Interactive REPL, Min profile, which will build, um, uh, how do you say, uh, we will build a production build for you, right? And uh, test profiles runs test, right? So uh, if you go to SRC, so let me just uh, start the REPL before we go in because it takes some time. So you start REPL and you can get that on the page as well. So you start REPL by running, basically running this, right? So CLG or closure doesn't really matter. Uh, so it invokes our deep hidden file with, uh, with this profile and this profile basically. So it means include figure main and also try to in, uh, also include the dev uh, profile uh, for figville, right? So figville will take its configuration from two files, the figville file and also dev file, which is here. Okay, and here we can see that it will try to load our namespace, which is here as that main, which is basically located here. Uh, and here we have like uh, a lot of boilerplates or this example of printing something that the test fun the functions that will uh, be tested uh, later. Uh, there is application state, there is GitHub implement, hello world, to mount, mount, some more and more and more and more. Uh, I will little, simplify this a little bit, but first let's see uh, if, if it actually works. Okay, uh, while we're at it, so let me show, so there are tests, some tests, actually two tests, right, right here, right, uh, that figure can run for you as well. And there is index.html, which is basically just load our main script here, and it also has this um, div which will be populated with uh, application, actually, right, so, okay, so this is a live application, and here, what? What happened? This shouldn't happen actually. And our connection was closed. Has been closed for I, I, I pressed something. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, yeah, let's let's run it again. Uh, it should actually run. Uh, okay. So basically, yeah. Uh, let's see. And there is CSS file which is uh, empty for now. So um, while it starts, we can actually do a little bit of cleanup here. So I want this to be called mount, actually, right? So let me rename this. Uh, this gets named mount. And I, I actually want to like really simplify all this. So it will have, it will be like this, right? And I won't need all that and that, and this we will call app. Uh, we will remove this. We will remove this, and what we, what I want to do is actually add one more function, which will be invoked on first load, and on first load we basically just call reload. Okay, and we need uh, this to be called this export. Okay, so this is the main function to we'll look up uh, for this component. And I also want to invoke this. So basically, a way to invoke this from JavaScript is, uh, is to call it like this. Okay. So what will happen, uh, we will first load all the JavaScript that we have, then it will try to call this function, which is defined here, and on the first load, it will yeah, basically display the same. Okay, let me see, let me see if it works. It seems to work, right? Uh, let me also... Okay, so li uh, let's test the live reloading feature. So it says if we edit this text, uh, it should change. Let's see if it changes. Okay, yeah, it changes, right? Uh, so, so the second thing that we want, right? So uh, uh, this one we don't need, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, let's try if uh, like uh, reactively changing it uh, will also update it. So. If I do this and I save the file, uh, it the fig will reloads the page for us, right? So it, it's not uh, an application to that. It's it's fig will. So it basically reloads the code and remounts the whole application, right? Uh, I want to test a um, little bit of uh, interactivity REPL, really. So 
Oh, well, actually, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's reactive, of course. Reactive. So uh, this means, okay, let me just remove uh, the boilerplate. And now the fig will reloaded it and uh, it shows like hello world, right? So, but if you change it here, it, nothing will change because uh, the app state didn't really change, right? So if we go to the REPL, we have REPL here, right? So it's, it's this REPL is connected to uh, the to the live page. And we see that state of the Tatum is with this. We can actually change it text yeah I run uh, oops and I, and I changed it without reloading actually the code so it it actually went to this atom here right and changed its value and RAM component uh, updated itself with new state because well because uh, that's what, what it does, right? Uh, it's how we wrote it. Okay, uh, now we have multiply, and multiply uh, is, a, is a test, obviously. So let me see if so. Uh, to test, you uh, you have to go to this page. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, like this. So this is a page from FigWheel, which basically runs your tests that are uh, defined here, right? If you change uh, it here, for example, it should fail the test, right? So, uh, 750 is not equal to 15. Really. So, it's, it's, that's cool. Right, another way to run tests actually. No, no. Uh, the other way to run test is to run another fig wheel profile like this. Okay. But the problem is it, it will run. So, yeah, wild run, and uh, let it run. But uh, what I'm actually going to do is to remove all the testing from, from the project because well, it takes extra time to, to, to load uh, tests and rerun them and we wouldn't, wouldn't need them at least at first, right? And maybe when we would need them, they will be on CLGC and we could just run them in Clojure. Okay, but anyways, yeah, let me start removing that so we don't need that. We, we go to depth, so we wouldn't need that. Either uh, we won't need that, okay? We won't need that and that. Okay. And so here, here I think I fixed everything. And the readme, there is no readme. Okay, yeah, there's some setup. We won't need that as well. Okay, but anyways. Let's let's see how I didn't save anything, so it should open a page with test right now. So I don't know what happens right now. Uh, in theory, it should run test somehow. Maybe they run in console. Let me see. Are they? Mm, yeah, so they are running console. So it, it says like. And it also died for some reason. I don't know what happens here. Maybe it's timeout, something like that. Uh, but yeah, it failed the test, and uh, maybe it should exit or it's like failure. Okay, let, let's remove the tests actually because we don't really need them, right? Um, here, so this icon is wrong as well. Um, yes, 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 and we, we wouldn't need that. We wouldn't need that. Uh, we wouldn't need that. Right. So I hope after all these modifications, we still can run the build, the Apple, right? And as another feature that I didn't show you, it's actually huh, uh, live reloading of the CSS. So box. Now this we will need, and once it starts, I will just show you. Uh, but uh, while it happens, let's go to the heroes repo, and uh, so the, all the code will be available here, right? So I will just let me let me do git init here, 
now I need probably a new file which will be git ignore uh, which will ignore target okay let's 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 say so if we change CSS, yeah, it changes. Uh, this 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 change is handled by Figwheel and so. Okay. Um, I think this is we have this directory right now. No, maybe not CP cache. Uh, this, we need a CP cache. Okay. Get ignore and we save it here. Use. Right. Uh, huh. Okay. Maybe I just I didn't have to write it one more. Okay. So it seems like we need to add everything, right? Yes, and also we will need to add a remote like this and push it to master. Okay, yeah, uh, that's about it. So the first episode, the next, and the next one we will try to get some some graphics on this page. Okay, so like battlefield or something like that. Uh, see you next time.